Happy Easter, everybody. Welcome home. How are you feeling? He is risen. Does everyone find their Easter basket this morning? I love it. I love Easter baskets. I remember when I first got married, um, my mom, who was the faithful Easter basket builder and hider for many, many years, she sat down with my wife, Rebecca, and she said, it's time to pass the baton. She said, she was like, okay, Rebecca, David cares about three things a lot. So from here on out, you are responsible for one, birthday donuts. Anyone do birthday donuts? No? Okay. Now you know what to get me. Number two, Christmas stockings. And number three, Easter baskets. And it was actually a pretty intense conversation. Like, Becca, do you understand the gravity of the situation? <laughs> do you understand your updated responsibilities as his wife? Donuts, stockings, and Easter baskets. Got it. And she's been doing wonderful. Thank you, honey. Um, just in case my mom is listening later. Just in case. Anyway, I love Easter baskets. I love them. I love to find them. I love to eat what's inside them. I love them. But in all seriousness, what I love most about them is what they help me remember. See, they bring me back to a simpler time, a time when, when faith wasn't something I felt like I had to sell. It was, it was just life, you know? When the story of Jesus and the cross and the empty grave, it wasn't a case to prove. It wasn't facts to defend or a position to vote for. It was just, it was just truth. It was, it was belief. I think sometimes, maybe it's just me, but I think sometimes the older we get, the more information we bring in, the more knowledge we acquire, the more we learn and the more we experience, the more we progress, the more we forget. Let me say that again, because that wasn't good. <laughs> the more we progress, the more we forget the beautiful simplicity of God's love. See, we begin to make it about something it isn't, faith and belief, and, and we overthink it, and then we get stuck in our own heads. And as I was preparing for this morning for what is the Super Bowl of all church services, as I was preparing for this morning, asking God for direction and clarity and vision, and saying, where do you want to lead us? I caught myself doing just that, making it into something it isn't. See, I was thinking, it's Easter, right? We got to make it great. We got to fill this place. We got to get folks saved. I got to be more strategic. I got to create this perfect environment with a, with a realistic backdrop of our city. Because maybe if I do that, then God will have the environment he needs to move greatest. I got to make sure we get our hazer going with even distribution <laughs> and updated lighting to really create a mood. The sound, man, it's got to be great. And the message, oh, it's got to be dynamite, right? It's got to be funny, but not too funny. It's got to be smart, but not too heady. It's got to be honest and authentic, but not too transparent. It's got to, I got to, I got to make it, I got to make it this, I got to, you got, so you can, so God can, and that's where I got stuck, right? I got stuck in my own head with my own plans, and that's when I heard, and that's when I heard yesterday morning, after weeks of thinking and anticipating and planning and preparing, I heard God saying something he'd already been saying the whole time, right? But I heard God saying, as I was finally able to hear, I heard him say, David, listen. David, I love you. Don't forget that. I love you. But this isn't about you. It isn't about you and your work. It's about me. It's not about your preparation and your words. It's about my word who became flesh and has the last word. It is finished. My love doesn't need a sales pitch, David. The resurrection doesn't need emotional manipulation. All it needs is clear communication. Just tell the truth. I heard, just tell the truth and I'll take care of the rest. Just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. And it was going over and over and over in my head, right? So I grabbed a few pastel M&Ms. 
Seriously, like the month after Easter at Target is the best because we just go and we clean up on all those pastel things. So I grabbed a few pastel M&Ms and I was brought back to a verse, the verse that we had just read a moment ago and it goes like this. It was on the screen. It says, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Christ Jesus from the dead. Let's all read that together. Read it with me. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord and Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. From there, from this passage, from this moment, I just want to take a moment to tell the truth. And that is that our God that our God is a God of new life, a God of great opportunity, of hope and freedom and victory and mercy who takes what's broken and repairs it. This is our God, who takes what's dying and dead and heals it for all eternity. Our God is a God of action, never satisfied watching from the sidelines, right? God was such great love for his people that he took a step down from heaven, not to condemn and not to judge, but so they might be saved through him. This is our God, the resurrected king. And even in a time in this world where all we see is death and darkness and destruction and tragedy and famine and war and the Zika virus and bombings in Brussels, and ISIS, and this crazy election, and, and poverty, and the 1%, and, 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 and even through it all, even through it all, we know and we believe that our God is in control, that our God is Lord of all and present even in the chaos, that our, our God has given us everlasting life into a living hope. Our hope, our hope is alive everlasting life and a kingdom that will never end through the raising of Jesus from the dead, the resurrecting of Jesus from the dead. That is the truth, that he is risen, our king is alive, death has been defeated, and the power that sin once had over the world and its people has been revoked. We will not mourn the grave any longer. We will not approach this morning with fear. Instead, we will celebrate with victory that he is risen. Our king is alive and our hope is here for all who call upon the Lord. That is the truth. That is the truth that we remember on this very special Resurrection Sunday. But this truth, it isn't new. This isn't new information. I think we just tend to forget it or ignore it, or overthink it, or make it into something it isn't. And that's why we've been hanging out in the book of John for the past seven weeks, is we've been looking to Jesus for some clarifying statements about truth. Where Jesus says, I am, to help us understand who we are. Where he says, I am, just to set the record straight. And today we've come to our last I am, a fitting close to our series. So if you have your Bibles, why don't you open up? We're going to be looking at John chapter 11. John chapter 11. And leading up to the statement for today, this I am statement in the story, we see that Jesus had just gotten word that one of his good friends was sick. His friend Lazarus was sick. And when Jesus finally made his way over to visit him, he found that Lazarus had already died about four days earlier. And so this is what we read, that Martha, Lazarus' sister, approached Jesus and said in verse 21. Martha says, Lord, if you had been here, if you'd only been here, my brother would not have died. I wonder how many of us 
have said something like that at some point in our lives. God, if you had only been there, if you, if you would have only stepped in, then I would. If you would have only made it possible, then, then she would. If you'd only been there, my brother would not have died. But here is true faith in verse 22. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Even after her brother had just died, four days ago. So Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said, I know, listen, I know that he's going to rise again in the resurrection on the last day, which is the Jewish belief that, that all the faithful would rise when the Lord comes back, when Jesus returns, or when the Messiah comes. I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection. And Jesus said, ha, ha hold on. He said, I am the resurrection I am the resurrection today, not in the end. I am it today. I am the resurrection and the life. And I, the hope that you're looking for, that you're looking forward to for Lazarus in the last day, it's me. And it's right now. And anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. And everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Martha, do you believe this? What an appropriate question for us all to consider this morning. Do you believe this? Do you believe that anyone who believes in Jesus will live even after dying? Well, from here, Jesus goes to visit the tomb of his friend. And when he gets there, he says, Roll the stone away. Dig up that grave. Dig up the grave. And then Martha, this is an interesting moment. Martha, the sister of the dead man, says to him, Lord, hold up. By this time, there will be an odor. For he has been dead for four days. And I like, this is interesting, I like that the odor seems to be her biggest concern. <laughs> you know, not, not the digging up of a grave or seeing her dead brother. It was all about the odor. Folks got sensitivities, I guess. But. Lord, there's going to be an odor. But Jesus says to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the greatness of God in action? So, verse 41, so they took away the stone, roll the stone away, and Jesus lifted his eyes and he said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. I knew that you would, but I said this on the account of the people standing around me. I said this for a reason, that they may believe that you sent me. Verse 43, and when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come on out, come out. And the man who had died came out with his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. And this is the good stuff. Verse 45. And many Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and seen what Jesus did, believed. Many Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed. Period. If you're taking notes on this Resurrection Sunday, I'm calling today's message Raised for a Reason. Raised for a Reason. And all throughout Scripture, we see the precision of God's actions. There are no random fortune or chance in how God chooses to operate. Our God is intentional. Everyone say intentional. Every repair has a purpose. Every relationship has a destiny. And every resurrection has a reason. When God, as Jesus, was raised from the grave that we're celebrating this morning, it wasn't random, right? It wasn't just to see if he could do it or so he could go back and haunt his friends, walking through walls and like, boom, you know? <laughs> I got you, Peter. <laughs> that would have been quite the plot twist, but... No, 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 no. It wasn't random. Jesus was raised for a very specific reason, so all might know and believe in him and be saved through him. John chapter 20, just a little further down, says that Jesus did many other signs not mentioned in this book, but the ones that are recorded are in there, so you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and by believing you may have life in his name. The miracles are mentioned so you may believe. 
and have life in his name. Jesus was raised from the dead so the world that God loves so much could return to relationship with him. So eternity with God could be available for those who repent and believe. This has always been the plan. Jesus died on purpose and rose for a reason. The miracle was a means to an end. It was so that you would believe and that by believing, have eternal life in his name. And there's no, there's no difference in the story of Lazarus. I mean, yeah, yep, I'm sure Jesus would have enjoyed another day with Lazarus. Yeah, they were friends. It says that he wept when he approached the tomb. I'm sure he would have loved another day with Lazarus, and, and Mary and Martha were his friends. They didn't want them to be sad. But the actual raising of Lazarus from the dead had very little to do with him living again on earth because he ends up dying again on earth anyway, right? Instead, I think what this scene shows is the truth of, that we tend to overcomplicate or, or analyze and then doubt, and that is that the reality the reality that Jesus holds life, both now and for eternity, in his hands. That he doesn't just resurrect or initiate the resurrecting, that he is the resurrection, the creator, the sustainer, the reviver of all life. He's the boss. That Jesus is in control. And what Lazarus was unable to accomplish on his own, right? Raising himself from the dead and rolling away his own Stone only confirmed this truth about Jesus three days later when Jesus went to the grave and rose from the dead and pushed away his own stone. And he did it. He went through all the trouble, the ministry, the miracles, the putting on skin, the cross, the grave. He did it all so you would believe and by believing have eternal life. And he did it because he loves you. It's really not all that complicated, right? He was raised for a reason, and the reason is you and me and the whole of humanity that he loves so much so that those who witness the miracle, so that those who see what Jesus did but also see who Jesus is. Hmm that they would repent and believe and be born again, emerging from their own graves into new life. Yeah. And that's it. That is the truth. You don't need to prove it. You don't need to defend it. Jesus is king of everything. He needs no defense. You don't need to have it all together or dress a certain way. You don't have to make amends or compensate for your past. All you have to do is believe and be raised. But, but raised for a reason, right? For a purpose, the same one that Jesus and the same one that Lazarus, so that all would believe and that by believing have life in his name. We need to live now as reflectors to the miracle as evidence of the resurrecting. Salvation is a moment, but the refining of your faith, the sanctification of your story, it lasts a lifetime. And that's why we're still here. So the observing world could see the salvation in your story. So they would experience th the truth of God in you. You were raised from the dead for more than just going to heaven. You were raised to bring heaven here, to reveal the immeasurable greatness of God to everyone you meet at home, at work, at the gym, getting coffee. I was actually thinking, I was thinking, do I reflect, and this is something for you to think about, do I reflect the love of God and the transformation he has done through me and in me? Do I reflect that when I'm waiting in line at Starbucks? Do I reflect the change that God has made in me when I do my taxes? What? <laughs> yeah. 
You're never expected to save yourself. But you are expected to reflect the Savior. And you were raised for a reason. This is going to be short and sweet. If the band wants to come on up, that would be great. Hmm. Raised for a reason. So the way I see it, and the way I see it, you are in one of two scenarios this morning. And maybe there's another one in there, but I'm trying to keep it simple. I, I, don't, wanna, I don't want this to come across like a sales pitch where I'm peddling cheap grace. And I'm honestly uninterested in selling timeshares in heaven, okay? I only want to do my best in this moment with the time I have to present truth. And so the way I see it, with fresh eyes, the way I see it is that you are either dead in your grave this morning, having never heard or responded to the message of Jesus, or you are raised to life, born again into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. It's either or. And I don't, I don't see an alternative. Maybe there is one that's really deep in here, but I just can't see it. But no matter where you find yourself this morning, what scenario you find yourself, I want to leave you with an opportunity, and I want to leave you with some good news, because you should never go to church and not hear some good news. So in your scenario, in your situation, for those of you who still, you're still on the fence about Jesus, I just need you to know that, that it is finished, it is done. The stone was rolled away and the grave is still empty. And now Jesus is calling out to you to get out of your own grave as you willingly lay there. In your sin and shame in the past, you try to forget, but it always seems to creep back in. Jesus is calling you out. He's saying, rise, rise up. Receive the grace. Receive the mercy I paid for on the cross. Receive my love that you don't think you deserve. I want to give you new life and a new hope, but you need to get out of the grave. So repent. Turn from your direction and turn towards me. Repent and believe and and be raised, even now, for a reason. And the reason is so the world might see and believe and be raised to life alongside you. And you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to talk all theological and Christian. You don't have to have a, that perfect past that you think is holding you back. All you have to do in this moment, all you have to do is to decide to believe. You just have to decide to believe and, and by believing, find eternal life in his name. So I guess for most of us, I just, I want you to know and I want you to walk away this morning remembering obviously the empty grave and what was accomplished. It is finished, that Jesus is king forever and ever. But I just want you to remember that you were saved for a reason. It wasn't for sitting around. Don't waste your life thinking you can coast your way into heaven. God has bigger plans for you, bigger dreams for you moving forward, that you would be his representative at work, that you would be a friend of the king of, of all things when you wait in line for coffee. God has such big dreams for you and how you will impact his kingdom here on earth. Because remember, God, God is intentional. There is no random, it's all for his glory. You were raised for a reason. So as we go from here, I just ask that you'd stop wasting it. Let's bring that verse up one more time. Why don't we all stand? And this is our prayer. This is our recognition of truth today as we all read this together out loud. As we all say, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of 
Jesus Christ from the dead. Let's give him a shout of praise this morning.